We shall now look at projectiles locked at an angle. Such project projectiles have horizontal and vertical components to their velocity. If a projectile is launched at 100 meters per second, at an angle of 60 to the horizontal, we have seen in a previous video that the horizontal velocity is 50 meters per second and the vertical part of its velocity is 86.6 .6 meters per second. We have also seen and demonstrated that the horizontal component of the velocity and the vertical component of the velocity being perpendicular to each other have no influence on each other. They are totally independent of each other. We shall therefore treat their motions independently. Throwing the projectile at 100 meters per second upwards is like giving it two speeds, one along the horizontal of 50 meters per second, and totally separately and independently, a vertical velocity of 86.6 .6 meters per second. That means that 100 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal is equivalent to a horizontal velocity of 50 meters per second and a vertical velocity of 86.6 .6 meters per second. Upon projection, the path followed by the projectile is parabolic. The path followed by the projectile is called the trajectory. The maximum distance the projectile travels along the horizontal is called the range. While the projectile is in air, the vertical and the horizontal motion are totally independent of each other. That is because they are perpendicular to each other. The horizontal motion remains at constant speed because there are no forces acting along the horizontal to either speed up that part of the velocity or slow it down. It therefore remains with a constant velocity of 50 meters per second. In fact, the horizontal velocity of the projectile will remain at 50 meters per second wherever it is throughout its whole path. And it will hit the ground with 50 meters per second along the horizontal. In contrast to this, the vertical component of the velocity will be continuously decreasing as it reaches its maximum height, where it becomes zero, and then it will continuously be increasing in a downward direction, hitting the ground with exactly the same speed vertically downwards as it was projected vertically upwards. In fact, the resultant velocity of the projectile at any instant can be found as the resultant of the two components of its velocity, the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. The horizontal velocity is easy to find because it always remains the same as the one at projection. However, the vertical velocity component can easily be found by simply utilizing the kinematics equations for vertical motion. For example, if we launch a projectile at an upward velocity of 86.6 .6 meters per second, it will take a particular time to reach maximum height. This projectile will take exactly the same time to reach its maximum height. Launching a projectile at a speed of 86.6 .6 meters per second vertically upwards will also travel a maximum height. In fact, this projectile will also travel exactly the same maximum height. In fact, any projectile launched at any speed and angle that will result in a vertical component of 86.6 .6 meters per second will reach exactly the same height. It is important to remember that we will be dealing with the vertical and the horizontal motions totally independently. We can therefore find anything we need to know about the vertical motion by considering the fact that we are projecting the object with an initial velocity upwards of 86.6 .6 meters per second and we can use the kinematics equations to find the vertical velocity or the displacement at any particular time we want. The horizontal motion, on the other hand, remains constant throughout its flight. If we knew the 
time of flight, then we will be able to multiply it by the horizontal velocity and find the maximum range that the projectile can reach. In order to find the time of flight, we can simply utilize the time it takes for the projectile to go from its launching point at an upward flight of 86.6 meters per second um, to reach maximum height. Find that time, and multiply it by two, that will be the time that the projectile will come down and land at the projection point. Let us take some time to view a vertical launch. In this case, the truck is moving horizontally at constant speed and launches vertically a ball. Obviously, the ball has the same horizontal velocity as the truck, and so will move the same horizontal distance in the same time as the truck. That is independent of the fact that it also has a vertical motion. So the vertical motion and the horizontal motion are independent. Looking back at the projectile problem that we had, if we wanted to find the horizontal range, then all we need to do is find the time that the velocity was moving with the constant speed of 50 meters per second along the horizontal. To find the time that it was moving along the horizontal, we can utilize the vertical motion components. That time that it was moving along the horizontal at 50 meters per second, it's exactly the same as the time that the ball took to go from um, launching point to maximum height and fall back down again if it were launched at a vertical velocity of 86.6 meters per second. Let us do this. The total time of flight can be found from it considering its vertical motion only. So if the body is fired upwards with a vertical part of its velocity at 86.6 meters per second, we can find its time to reach the maximum height and therefore the time of flight. So the time of flight can easily be found by using equation 1. Substituting for the initial velocity, which is 86.6 meters per second, and the acceleration of minus 10, the time to reach maximum height, in other words, when the velocity is 0 meters per second, is 8.66 seconds. As it takes 8.66 seconds to reach maximum height, then the time of flight is two times that, 17.32 seconds. During that time, it was also traveling along the horizontal at a constant speed of 50 meters per second. As it was in the air for 17.32 seconds, traveling at a constant speed of 50 meters per second, that means that it traveled a total horizontal distance of 866 meters. So to get the range, we multiplied the horizontal speed with the time that it was moving at that horizontal speed, which was the time of flight. The time of flight was found by utilizing the vertical velocity components. The distance traveled to maximum height can easily be found. We do this using the vertical velocity component. To find the maximum height or distance traveled along the vertical, when projected with a vertical velocity component of 86.6 meters per second, we can utilize equation 2. Substituting into equation 2 gives us a maximum height of 375 meters. In conclusion, treating the vertical and the horizontal parts separately, we have managed to find the range of the projectile and its maximum height. In a similar way, we can treat the vertical motion of the object independently and find information we want about the vertical component of the velocity at any particular time instant, whereas the horizontal velocity will always remain constant. Utilizing information about the vertical and horizontal velocity components, we can find the resultant velocity of the ball and, in fact, its direction of travel. We can use Pythagoras and trigonometry to do this.